Hey there guys, DMO73 here, bringing you another feature match for the week. Playing against my buddy Nick, uh, I am playing um, a mono blue Shion marching aggro list versus Nick, who is playing a mono green Machina Rush. Uh, list so to um, Shion we haven't seen yet on the channel so I thought this was a pretty fun way to kind of introduce Shion um, using a lot of the mechanics that she utilizes in the water of Moonlit Savior and uh, this is a very different take on Machina that I thought that you guys would enjoy uh, utilizing some of the cards from Moonlit Savior and uh, Twilight Wanderer so Let's just go ahead and jump right in. So the whole idea of the marching aggro is to load up a bunch of stuff and then pump them up using kind of their uh, effect, their own natural effects. Uh, you kind of just march on through to your opponent's face. And uh, Nick's idea is to kind of load up uh, and get a really powerful judgment um, that brings in a lot of stuff. And then immediately go into a uh, March of the Machine Lord to just crush uh, you know, and rock through the face. So Nick's going to be going first. Uh, don't mind the magic stones there. He didn't have enough basic green stones, so we just have like backwards cards and random stuff. But they're all just basic greens. Uh, so he plays that first turn Elvish Priest. Um, I go ahead and decide to play a first turn Musician of Shangri-La and a Hydra Monica. You're seeing me look at the top card of my deck there and everything. Shion has the ability to let me constantly look at the top card of my deck. A pretty interesting idea, especially when you have Hydra Monica, which lets you ship away cards. So at the end of my turn, uh, Nick's going to use Machina's effect to search for a one-drop uh, Void card. He's going to grab a Mechanical Knight, or Clockwork Soldier. So the cool thing about the Machina Rush list is that it uh, has a lot of consistency. Uh, it just in the fact that Machina searches out all your combo pieces, and a lot of your combo pieces are pretty cheap. So even right off the bat, you can get a bunch of stuff. So there's another basic green stone. Two for a Gretel, hits a basic green. Two for a Gretel, hits another basic green. And then he's gonna play that Mechanical Knight, or Clockwork Soldier. So as I said, lots of consistency, lots of ramp, it gets to a point where you literally just can't keep up, uh, and it happens very explosively. I'm going to attempt to swing into the Elvish Priest with my Musician, I then have to reveal the top card of my deck. If it's a monster, I get an additional 200 attack and defense, so he becomes a 5-5, and if, it's, if I'm not a Resonator, then he gets bounced to my hand, so this is why Shion is pretty helpful. I'm going to play two, a Peasant Revolt, which lets me put a one-drop Water Resonator from my hand to the field, so I get an Alice Soldier. So I essentially get to go put two creatures out for the price of one. Going into my turn, Nick's going to tap for another stone. Gonna attach a magic screw to that Clockwork Soldier. One of the three void cards of Moonlit Savior adds 6-6 six, six to any Resonator with no attribute. So he is uh, currently a 9-9 target attacker. He's gonna try to kill my Peasant Revolt. I'm gonna block it with my Alice's Little Scout, which lets me draw a card when it dies. He's gonna play another Mechanical Soldier. Or, sorry, Clockwork, Clockwork Soldier. gonna go ahead and search with Machina for another magic screw and he's gonna go ahead and put that on his uh, other clockwork soldier already he's gonna play that clockwork scout plane I'm gonna ship away that card on the top of my deck because I don't want to try into it and then draw it a turn so I'm already staring down a lot of damage, and there's really not way, much way for me to get over it, just because that uh, Clockwork Soldier is a 9-9 and is recovered. I go ahead and decide to play Muse. Looking at the top card of my deck. Muse, what happens when I play Muse is I call the top card of my deck the type of card, so Spell, Chant, Instant, Regazinator, Regalia, whatever, and I reveal it, and if I'm right, I get to put it in my hand. Well, I get to look at the top card of my deck at all times, so I'm obviously going to be right. So I get that Dance of Inspiration, and I decide to pass the turn at that. So 
So Nick's in a good position here. He's got a lot of resonators on board. Three void already. Um, you know, he's got that flyer and the clockwork, uh, all that stuff. He's got the target attacking with the nine nines. There's just a lot of potential here. So he's going to swing at my um, Muse for 900. I'm going to go ahead and cast Dance of Inspiration on it. It's a water resonator, so it gets 400 defense for the turn, uh, and it would untap. So if I was blocking something else, it would untap. Um, but Muse says whenever a resonator you control takes damage less than its defense, you just cancel all that damage. So because Muse is a, technically has 10, uh, 1,000 defense, that 9 damage doesn't even get dealt to it. Which means that I have a pretty strong blocker for the rest of the turn, too. Taps for a stone. Places second scout plane. Spends three and searches for a uh, Dark Machina. Dark Machina is an incredibly important part of this combo piece. Uh, he lets you search for any card that's void when he comes into the field, um, which is devastating when you flip uh, Machina and you just put Dark Machina straight into the field. So you get to essentially replace it, and usually you search for your March of the Machine Lord. Um, so he's going to swing in. I'm going to go ahead and block that with Muse as well, so it negates that damage. You see he already has one March of the Machine Lord in his hand, so I'm in a pretty bad spot here. I'm going to ship a card at the end of the turn. Looking to see whether or not a judgment would be effective right now. Unfortunately not. So I'm at a position right now where I, I pretty much know that I'm going to die next turn. Like there's pretty much nothing I can do because I know the Dark Machina is coming. I know he's got the stuff to be able to search out March of the Machine Lord, plus the flyers, and it's just uh, it's not a good position for me to be in. So I get a Hydromonica off the top. Or play my other Hydromonica. I tend to swing five. Revealing a Resonator. So it's going to be 500 damage. Nick's going to take it. He's fine with that. Now one thing I could do here is do a Judgment uh, and get that Peasant Revolt to come out onto the field and then get another one drop. So I kind of shore up my defense for the turn. Um, but th that really doesn't help me that much in the sense of, um, you know, th then most of my stuff's gonna be dead. So I try and actually use Val uh, the uh, Hydromonica to try and um, put something on top of my deck that I want, get luck possibly get lucky. Um, but I end up just going ahead and tapping for stone and using Valentina. So Valentina lets me take control of one of his resonators as long as Valentina's on the field. It doesn't recover, so that's I, at least kind of I stall him out for a turn is the thought, in the sense that even if he, you know, manages to kill the Valentina and take back the uh, mechanical uh, Clockwork Soldier, it'll still be tapped. So I'm essentially just trying to give myself another blocker and kind of rob him of a turn. So he's got those two scout planes out there. He's got lots of stuff in his hand. So he's going ahead and it looks like he's gonna probably thinking about whether or not he wants to do judgment and how he does it.
It's going to do Judgment for four. If I was in Nick's position, I probably would have, before Judgment, searched for another Magic Screw um, to be able to put onto one of my um, Scout Planes just to make sure that I get the damage because here comes three Resonators, including a Scout Plane and that Dark Machina. Dark Machina is going to let him search for the Marshal the Machine Lord. And now that he has both of them in his hand, he's going to be able to um, just play them both for free because he does have five resonators. So all of his machines are going to get uh, plus six plus six at swiftness. And there's literally no way that I can block all that damage and still survive. So he wins game one and we go to game two. So that's the combo working out for him and in, in his favor. So game two, we're starting off getting a uh, Hymnals Memoria, which is her stone. When it comes into play, I can call a, uh, a card name, reveal the top card of my deck, and if I'm right, put it in my hand. With Shion, you can just look at the top card of your deck, so uh, you are always right in that sense. So I got a um, magician or Musician of Shangri-La, so I get to start my aggression package a little earlier. Get another Hymnals Memoria. Uh, call Valentino, the Puppet Monarch, get that into my hand. So I have to pay two and play Hera and pop his, um, pop his Mary Bell. He can't really do anything with it because of the fact that he has no other targets to be able to pop um, with Mary Bell, so there's no way he can just, like, sack it. Uh, and since he knows that, um, and then the problem is the card on top of my deck after the fact was a uh, not a resonator, so I can't swing in with my musician, which is unfortunate. But he does go ahead and shoot a uh, ship for that mechanical uh, clockwork knight soldier off the search. So he plays a Gretel and an Elvish priest on his turn. I play a bow, get some counters on it. I play Muse, I declare Regalia, I reveal that I got another bow, so two bows makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. <coughs> Swing in, and now I got a Resonator on top of my deck, so I can get that 500 damage in, which he lets happen. And I swing with Hera, attempt to get another 500 damage in, and he lets that go through as well. So down to 3,000 damage. So feeling a little bit more secure in this game. Not over yet though, because his combo could happen very quick, and he is going to get to get that screw uh, off this Elvish Priest. He's going to pay two for another Gretel to ramp even further. one for a kid, uh, clockwork soldier and the second clockwork soldier and then putting a screw on one of them taps for a stone and passes the turn what he's thinking about it he's gonna go ahead and put the screw on the other one as well so now they're both nine nine target attackers Use Valentina to take one of the mechanical or clockwork soldiers and crash it into the other one. 
essentially two for, you know, getting to take out two of his cards, technically four of his cards with only one of mine. Uh, I'm gonna try to kill his Elvish Priest. He's gonna, or try to kill his face. He's gonna block with the Gretel, and I'm gonna take another 500 with uh, Hera. He's going to go ahead and do Judgment for four and put out uh, two Mary Bells and the Dark Machina. So he's going to get to search something out. So I have him in a good position here because uh, I pushed him to kind of have to do pressure early pushed him to be in a position where he's kind of uncomfortable, where he kind of has to make a sacrifice here, uh, compromise himself. He doesn't really want to be in this position, that's just where he ends up being. Uh, and then he's going to pay two and do uh, March of the Machine Lord, because he does have three Void Resonators, so it only costs him two. So all those Mary Bells are 15-15 with Swiftness, and they have Pierce. He attacks at the musician and I go ahead and let it happen um, because I recognize that uh, that actually was a kind of a misplay there um, because pierce damage won't go through to my face so it makes perfect sense for me to just let uh, let him kill the musician and let it die and not take any damage essentially making him waste one of those uh, Mary Bells So then the other Mary Bell is going to go at my face, and I'm just going to take the 15 damage. There's no real point. Um, there's no way for me to kill it. He's just going to pass the turn and uh, let the Dark Machina sit there, which makes more sense because I can just double bow and it would kill him. So it makes sense that he wouldn't want to do that. Hit a uh, little red the pure stone. Gonna call it blue because the deck is mono blue. Use Valentina to swing at one of the Mary Bells. He's gonna attempt to block. I'm gonna bow. In response, I'm gonna pump up Valentina to a 10-10 and then also use Dance of Inspiration on her to make her a 10-14. So she'll recover. Uh, Mary Bell won't die, but neither will Valentina because she has 1400 damage, so that damage gets negated. Uh, and then I can just crash into it again and kill it. So it's kind of a heavy commitment, but I do get one of those uh, Mary Bells off the board. more deciding which of my multiple creatures I want to play so I produce some will but I haven't used it yet I go to kill the elvish priest with my Hera he lets it happen Use those two will that I produced earlier to play a peasant revolt and get an Alice's little scout out. And then looking at the next card at the top of my list, I pass the turn. So I feel kind of secure here. I've got some blockers. I can survive the pierce damage from Mary Bell for the most part. Go ahead and pay three to play the Dark Machina. 
doesn't have any way to search outside of Dark Machina now. He's going to search for the second, the last Mary Bell out of the deck. Which makes sense in this position. Mary Bell is kind of the way that he finishes this game off. Um, with that pierce. So I'm going to shuffle up. Swings for 12 at my face. I'm going to block with the Alice's Little Scout and take 10 and get to draw a card. Passes the turn, and I get to keep moving. Two will. Produced. Deciding what I want to do with them. to go ahead and try to crash into Machina. He's going to God's Art, which is going to save his Resonators for the turn. So I can't kill any of his Resonators this turn, but the trade with uh, Valentina is still going to happen. I'm okay with that. I could have used my Dance of Inspiration to, to save save her, but really, I, I'm not too worried about having Valentina on the board right now. I'm in a position right now where I have that Levitine, so I could do Judgment if I wanted. Decide to tap for stone instead. Get a Hymnal's Memoria. Uh, call Cheshire Cat. Get Cheshire Cat off the top. Play three for a Drill Sergeant. So Drill Sergeant is the kind of the last card from Shion stuff that I want to show you guys. Um, very interesting card. It has the same kind of trigger as uh, Musician. Whenever it attacks or blocks, you reveal the top card. Uh, and if it's a resonator, all of your resonators that you control gain plus three, plus three for the turn, um, which is really strong. So he's got one Mary Bell out. See, he drew into that magic screw and a second Mary Bell, or he still has the second Mary Bell. Gonna put the screw on a dark machina. It's gonna tap it to use Mary Bell's effect. So Maybe it pays one and taps a creature and gets the attack and defense of that creature. So she gets an additional 10-10 uh, right now. So she's a 22-22. Uh, so what I have to do is I have to block with Drill Sergeant, which triggers. Uh, it is a Resonator, so everything gets plus three, plus three, putting up to being a 10-10. Uh, and then I use uh, Dance of Inspiration to untap him and make him a 10-14. Still gonna die, but at least I take significantly less uh, damage. I'm only gonna take 800 damage from that hit. And all my resonators now have plus three, plus three for the turn. In addition, now there's no way possible for that Dark, dark Machina to get in any damage. He decides to play the Mary Bell from his hand, leaving him currently tapped out and out of cards, which is a position that I want him to be in in this case, because this is the turn that I get to bring things back. So 
So I play Cheshire Cat. Let's me draw two and set one back on top of my deck. I'm doing this to set up my shield and play. Deciding which resonator I want to put back on top of my deck. I'm gonna do Drill Sergeant. Judgment for three. After playing my Labatine. So I have some swiftness for the turn. So Sheon's gonna come into play, reveal the top card of my deck. If it's a resonator of five or less, I get to put it into play. So there's March uh, Drill Sergeant again. Tap to pump up the damage for Shion. Really, I could get lethal this turn um, with Shion the way she is now, uh, and the fact that I have bow. So I'm gonna sack the Cheshire Cat, give her some additional damage. So she's a 1300. Um, yeah, just with the way it works right now, I could easily just swing for lethal, but I do something a little different. I want to show off the God's Art in a little bit interesting way. Uh, so I'm going to swing at the Mary Bell uh, for 1300 damage. He's going to choose to not let it, to not do any blocks. I'm going to use Shion's God's Art, which gives her an additional 500, 500, uh, and then she immediately does a one-sided duel of truth. So she becomes um, a 14-15, 14, 14, a 14, 15, dealing 1,800 damage every time she attacks, um, which is going to be enough to kill the one Mary Bell, and then the attack's going to get through on the second Mary Bell, and it's going to kill it. So I'm going to swing and crash in my two little dudes against his Dark Machina, and then pass the turn. So again, I could have gone lethal there by doing the exact same thing and just waiting for his response and sacking all my creatures with Levitine to uh, pump up Shion to be able to just crash through in regards to whatever he blocked with. Um, but I thought that was that move was a little bit more fun because there's literally, I, as far as I know, there's nothing that he could do at this point that could close out the damage. Play Cheshire Cat. Draw. Get another Levitine. In the same vein, I could I could do it again here. Um, I could just tap everything up. Use Bow to kill whatever he blocks with. So I swing for seven, which becomes ten. So all my resonators now have plus three, plus three. He blocks with the uh, Gretel, which gets bowed, so it takes 10,000 uh, damage. Uh, swing in for um, lots of damage with Shion, 1100, which again, in response to no blocks, I could just pump up and kill. Swing for 500 with that, and then swing for 600, or sorry, 800 with Hera, and then 600 with Muse. 700 with the use because of the pump up from uh, Drill Sergeant. So moving into game three. So I know this is going to be a little bit of an uphill battle. I've seen how fast his deck can curve. Um, and being on the draw certainly hurts in this matchup. Decide that I'm gonna keep the whole hands. Uh, I have that Valentina in my hand. The hope is that I can possibly try to take something that he overcommits with. Gets that first stone, gets that first turn priest, and passes the turn. So Hiddle's Memoria gets to call the Hydromonica. Double Hydromonica comes into play. Pay one. Play my Alice's little scout, and I have to pass the turn of that. So he searches for the magic screw. Go 
goes for a second turn. It's gonna tap for a Gretel. Again, he's hitting a very, very, very uh, optimal, you know, first couple turns. Plays that Clockwork Soldier and the screw onto it. So he's already at his turn two, sitting with that nine nine target attacker. And he's way up. He's literally at double the will that I have available. Play a Muse. Call in Alice's little scout. Without my bows, that feels pretty bad. So I've got the uh, Levitine, which is nice if I wanted to get Shion, but I need at least one more will to be able to flip. So that's pretty suboptimal. Taps for another stone. Search with Machina, get that mechanical knight. Or Clockworks Knight. Gonna play it and give it a screw. He's going to swing at my muse with his Clockwork Soldier. Uh, I'm going to use Hydromonica to ship a card away. Hydromonica to ship the other card away, and I'm going to block with Alice's Little Scout. I'm essentially trying to draw into something that I actually want off the Alice's Little Scout draw. Tap it for the stone. Got Levitine off the Hymnal's Memoria. Finally found a bow. Don't know how much good it does me though. Uh, and I try and slam down a Valentina and get Zeke's. Wasn't expecting the Zeke's, so that's kind of a little bit of a scoop there, but I decided that maybe I could pull it, turn it around. So keep going for the sake of the channel, but that was a really powerful move um, that puts me way behind. I should have expected there, I should have uh, thought about the possibility that there could have been a Zeke's there. Um, and just uh, bit him a little bit more careful. So he's gonna go ahead and deal, uh, get to swing in on his turn, because like, he just target attacks by Muse and I'm tapped out. So I'll take 1100 from the uh, Clockwork and the um, Gretel. Taps for a stone. He's gonna pay three to play a uh, Supply Force. This is actually a really, really strong play um, by Nick. Uh, and then he's going to put another screw on the uh, <coughs> Clockwork Soldier, excuse me, and get to banish the supply team to uh, pump, to let uh, Clockwork Soldier attack again. So now he's at 1,500, so I'm immediately down to uh, 14, which is a really bad spot for me to be in. Then he's going to pay two and finish off uh, his hand and his stones with a scout plate. So I'm staring down the worst stuff right now. If I had been able to put that Valentina on the top of my deck, that would have been helpful, but before I decide to try to do Judgment, I'm going to see if Hydromonica can help me get lucky. Unfortunately, no such luck, but I do have the second Valentina in hand to take his gigantic... <laughs> Um, this gigantic clockwork soldier. Still staring down some pretty hard stuff right now, because I the clockwork soldier was tapped, so it's not going to recover. So he's going to try to kill my, uh... Valentina, I'm gonna let it happen. I'm gonna shoot the bow, and in response, it looks like a little convoluted here, but I'm gonna use Levitine to sack off the <laughs> to sack off the Clockwork Soldier before he actually kills Valentina. 
Uh, looks a little bit convoluted there, but that way, you know, at least in this vein, we both lose some stuff. Unfortunately, though, it does not matter for me. Because he's going to be able to finish me off this turn. And you'll see how. It's a pretty silly way that he finishes the game off. So he's going to search. And grab one of those last magic screws. He's going to play the screw on his scout plane, which is going to swing in for 1100 damage, putting me down to 300 life. And then uh, Gretel gets to swing in for 200, and then Elvish Priest finishes me off for 100. So you'll see him swing through here in a second. So that's actually the game's guys, uh, as he finishes me off here with an Elvish Priest. Let us know what you think about it. Uh, deck list will be up this Saturday as always. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, until next time, until next week, this is DM073 signing off.